Hey guys, Chris from Axe Effects Tutorials here, and I wanted to make a new video that shows how to update the MFC 101 firmware using FractalBot. I have an older video that shows how to do it using some older methods and programs, but I actually don't have an MFC 101 anymore. So what I did is I took some of that old footage and recut it and also put some new edits and new information in here to create a new video. So some of the information might appear old in the video, like uh, I show firmware version 2.15 at one point or something like that. Uh, anything I kept in this video is current, just some of the numbers and that sort of thing might uh, show some older stuff. Uh, so here's the new video and how to update your MFC 101 using FractalBot. So to update your MFC 101, you will need a standard 5-pin MIDI cable and we'll be using the MIDI import on the MFC 101. Uh, even if you use the expansion port to connect your MFC 101 to your Axe FX2, uh, it won't work with just that. You will need to use the MIDI import and a standard MIDI cable, so make sure you have that. We can use the Axe FX2 to pass along the firmware update to the MFC 101 using the Axe FX2's USB adapter mode. I will explain that a little later, but let's make our connections first. For those of you who use an Ethernet cable to go from the MFC control port on the Axe FX2 into the expansion port on the MFC 101, you can still use that to power your MFC 101, but the data again will not travel through this cable. We still need the 5 pin MIDI cable. So a quick word of caution when you're plugging in your USB cable to the Axe FX2. I've read more than a few times on the forum where somebody had, I guess they were reaching around the back and they were trying to find where's that USB port. And they accidentally plugged the USB cable into the MFC port here. And that's bad because the MFC port is sending power. You connected the cable and there was a big spark and you broke the MFC port on your Axe FX2. So that needs to be repaired and all that. So not good. Uh, a lot of people suggest putting a piece of tape like this over the MFC port if you're not using it or if there's not a cable already plugged in just to make sure that when you are plugging and unplugging your USB cable, you actually go into the USB port. So just be careful there. Don't fry your Axe FX and uh, don't break anything. Now, before we continue with the update, we need to tell the MFC 101 where to expect the data from. Uh, there is the expansion port and also the MIDI port, and we need to choose the correct one. So we're going to go to Edit, and then hit our MIDI menu, number 4, and we're on Use Port. Now we can choose between Expansion and MIDI, and what we want to use is MIDI. Remember, over the expansion port, which is the Ethernet cable, we cannot update the firmware. The data will not go through there. We're using the MIDI port on the MFC. So make sure you choose port MIDI. You have to go to your I.O. menu and page over to your MIDI menu. Scroll down until you get to send real-time sysx. Now by default it's set to all and what this does is send tempo and tuner data between the MFC and Axe FX2. We don't want that to interfere with this firmware update so we're gonna change it to none. So make sure you change that send real-time sysx to none. Then we're going to go down a couple more and USB adapter mode, we're going to turn that on. What it'll do is it'll pass all the information that's coming from our computer into the Axe FX2 and it'll come through the Axe FX2 and out into our MFC 101. So once all your connections are made, you need to enter firmware update mode, and to do that, you need to hold switch number one while you power up the MFC. Well, it's, mine is on right now, so I need to power down. And let's hold switch one, and then we're gonna power on. 
and immediately it says firmware update mode and that's what we want. We still need the five pin MIDI cable connected to the out or through port and into the MIDI in port on your MFC 101. Next you want to go to the FractalAudio.com support page and when you get here you'll see a list of the current firmware and presets for the AxeFX2 uh, as well as firmware for the MFC 101. This is what we want to download, the latest MFC 101 firmware. It happens to be 3.07 at the time of this recording and you're just going to click download. When your download is complete, you'll end up with a zip file. Just double click that to get the folder where the files actually are and then open up that folder. Now there are actually two firmware files in this folder. Uh, both are labeled .syx, which stands for sysx, which is a type of MIDI communication. And these are the two firmware files. Uh, one is for the original or the Mark II MFC 101. Uh, and the Mark III version of the MFC 101 has its own firmware file. So just make sure you know which MFC version you have, and we'll be selecting one of these a little bit later. The program we're going to use to install the firmware is called FractalBot, and this is from Fractal Audio. You can get it from their FractalAudio.com website. Now, this program can install firmware for the AxeFX2, uh, the FX8, as well as the MFC 101. And since we're doing the MFC 101, we need to make sure we choose the correct version and model. So uh, there's uh, MFC 101 Original or Mark 1, some people call it. Uh, there is a Mark 2. And those two share the same firmware file. And then there's also a Mark III version of the MFC 101. So just choose the appropriate one here. Uh, I have an original, so I'm going to choose that. Now we need to select an output port. And we are using the AxeFX2 as our MIDI output. So I'll click this drop down menu here. And I can choose none, which we don't want to do. And then you see AxeFX2 MIDI in. And on my screen, you're going to see XUSB. Now, that's another USB and MIDI device that I have plugged in. We're not using that. We are going to use the AxeFX. So if you do have multiple interfaces plugged in, make sure you choose the AxeFX. Next, you're going to choose Browse because you need to find the firmware file wherever it exists. So here I have it, and again, we have an original MFC in this example, so I'm going to choose the MFC 101 original file. Click Open to bring that in, and now you're ready to go. We're going to hit Begin, and it's not going to start immediately, so let's hit Begin and see what happens. We now see a pop-up that has pretty much all the instructions that I've given you in this video. You can go ahead and read these just to make sure you've done everything correctly. So you've selected the MFC 101 firmware file um, with the AxeFX2 as your MIDI port. Make sure that your AxeFX2 has USB adapter mode set on. You're going to disable the real-time sysx. And we've already entered firmware update mode on our MFC. We've already connected the MIDI cable from the MIDI out of the AX to the MIDI in of the MFC. And it reminds us that Ethernet and Fastlink uh, communication is not possible for updating. Uh, once everything's done, we're just going to hit send and it's going to start sending that file. On your MFC, you'll start seeing a percentage indicator showing when the update is complete. Once the update is complete, it will say firmware update complete and you have to power cycle the MFC. So let's turn it off. And then turning it back on. And then again, let's check the firmware by pressing edit, going to our setup menu, and then clicking page left one time. And as you can see, we have successfully updated to firmware version 2.15. Now this firmware update procedure should be the same with any future firmware update for the MFC 101. So have fun updating and playing around with the latest features.